Hey traders, in this video, we are gonna look at bizarre hedge fund strategies. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome uh, to you. All right, so bizarre hedge fund strategies. I've got seven for you, I've got another one in my head, so let's call it eight. End of the day, guys, hedge funds can invest in whatever they like. That's generally what a hedge fund is about. It's like, hey, we take money and we invest it in areas we think will make money. We are just in the business of making you a return on your capital. Now, we know some hedge funds will take in outside investment. Some hedge funds are running their own fund for family money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But generally speaking, they can do whatever they like, as long as it's clear from the beginning in the prospectus and what you're signing up for, what they do. So you can't say, hey, we are a hedge fund that will outperform the stock market and we'll buy stocks that we think are going to do better than the others and then go out and start doing some of these. No, no, no. But if you say, hey, this is what we do, it's a fund, and most likely they're going to categorize themselves into perhaps one of these things, or they're going to be broad and say, hey, you know what? Actually, what we do is we put 50% into the stock market and we try to outperform the market and generate alpha in that way and we put 50% into what we call mixed investments which in the past have included x y z and we look for anything that matches this this and this criteria if you're happy sign here send me 10 million quid <laughs> you get the idea right so let's have a look at them and these are quite interesting so the first one is life settlements i don't think you can be surprised in this and if you, there's a bit of a theme here with some of these as well guys is that Life settlements is basically buying life insurance and hoping that these people will die sooner. So the idea is they potentially take the risks or they buy batches of risks off insurance companies. Insurance companies are making a margin on it. They're offsetting the risks of the hedge funds. Hedge funds are saying, okay, well, I quite like to buy you know, a tranche of people. I don't know, I'm guessing this is what they do. Maybe they have to take everybody, but my guess is they say, okay, we wouldn't, we'd quite like to buy a block of people that match this criteria. And so they take the risk off them and assuming that perhaps they're gonna die earlier for whatever reason. And if you dig into this kind of stuff, you see that some of the risks to their portfolio are finding things like a cure for cancer, medical breakthroughs, all this stuff, which is kind of bizarre really because that serves humanity, but on the other side of it, you know, to make money, they actually want the majority of people to die earlier than predicted, so their life insurance um, settlement uh, pays them out, pays them and not the others. Uh, okay, so number two, disaster bonds. Similar kind of thing, this is insurance companies offsetting risk onto hedge funds. So insurance companies might say, oh, you know what, we've got quite a cluster of disaster, disaster, disaster risk in this geographical area. If something happens, uh, we don't really want to take the risk. You know, because insurance companies aren't really about taking risk, even though that, that's obviously the point of insurance is they're taking risk, but if they can hedge some of that risk and make money in between, you know, they, they're more interested in actually bringing in that business. So it's about marketing for them, it's about sales, it's about selling the policies, it's about retaining customers, not necessarily managing the risk. And so when they've got a cluster of risks, they might say, hedge fund might say, hey, okay, you know what? I will buy that risk off you. And so the insurance company makes a margin based on what the end consumer is paying to hedge against that business risk, let's say in a tornado zone or an earthquake zone. And then they will pass it on to the hedge fund who will buy you know, a block of it and say, okay, we'll take that risk on for X. Insurance company may make a margin or perhaps they don't, perhaps the whole overall they're making a margin, they just wanna get rid of that risk. And the hedge fund will buy that thinking, okay, we can collect premiums and they'll do some research and say, okay, we don't produce there's going to be another earthquake or we don't think there's going to be this going to be that i appreciate that they are guessing but that's the point isn't it they're by disaster bonds and hoping there's not a disaster in the next 10 years and they can collect all those premiums and keep it for themselves so that's one thing they may do. Number three is financing litigation claims. So litigation, super, super expensive. Legal bills mount up, all the experts that you have to get involved sometimes mounts up. This brings a big, big bill. And so often the hedge funds will say, okay, let's look at the claim. What's the likelihood of it being successful? Okay, do we agree with that? Right, how much is required to fund it? Okay, it's X, right, we will fund it and we expect to get X back in return because of that. So number off the top of your head, we'll give 10 million, we expect to get back 12 million over the year, and the chance of success is X, so we think we're gonna get back rather than lose it. So you get the point. So they fund it, they take the risk on for funding it, but they will receive a big chunk back when it's successful. So hopefully they only fund those that are successful. So financing litigation claims. And number four, 
wine, art, cars, pottery, any antique type things. And you might be saying, cars, what are you talking about? That motor I bought two years ago has been absolutely howled in value. And quite right, if you're going and you're buying a new car from the showroom, your Audi dealership, your Merc dealership, whatever, two years later, you go back and chop it in and you get hammered, right? But nowadays, a lot of supercars, a lot of rare cars, especially a lot of old classics are appreciating in value. So we can kind of bracket that all in. S certain wine appreciates in value certain art as we know appreciates in value and now certain cars appreciate in value so we're finding and seeing funds that are investing in classic cars or collections of classic cars looking after them sitting on them hoping that eventually they will become more valuable just the same as you have with wine and art all right, so number five, fraud activism. So fraud activism is basically spending a lot of money to identify a fraudulent company that they can then expose with a short position. So theoretically is you are running a company and you're doing something quite dodgy. It's listed on the exchange. The hedge fund digs around, spends a lot of money kind of looking, seeing what's happening, digging into the books, finding out what's going on, recognizes it's fraud, takes a short position on that and then off they go, they start to announce it, maybe they try and get on the board, maybe they try and expose it, maybe they try and do this and that and the other. So that's fraud activism. The idea is to capitalize from uh, dodgy companies. And number six is film, so similar kind of thing, funding a film, it goes a business, basically a business plan, isn't it, film? This is, the, this is the story, these are the actors we wanna get, this is how much we need, this is how much we assume we're gonna take from the box office, this is how much we're gonna assume uh, to take from any merchandise and whatever it may be after that. And the hedge fund goes, yeah, sounds good, we'll do it, or it goes, no. I'm not interested. And the final one, guys, is other information. So other information, actually, before we get to that, the other one that often is the case uh, that was an odd one is lottery wins. I think in the US, when you win the lottery, you can either take um, a kind of annuity that pays out every year, or you can take a lump sum. Most people take the lump sum but actually the annuity pays out more, I believe, over time. So hedge funds take the spread in between and say, okay, we'll take the annuity, we'll give them a lump sum a little bit more than what they get from the lottery, and we'll take the, the more that we get out from the annuity. So there's that, which is a bit of a crazy one as well, but that is there. And number seven is other information. So this is when, it's kind of similar to, I suppose, fraud activism, but they're spotting information that's public domain, right? We're not talking about insider info here, but they're, uh, they, uh, they're kind of capitalizing on that. So example would be somebody who is paid or a company that's paid to count the trucks going in and out of a warehouse. And they're like, okay, well, this seems to be out and this seems to be down or maybe counting the trucks that's going out of a mine. And so they can work out the production of the mine before or the uh, theorized production of the mine uh, before anyone else, or maybe even uh, a restaurant chain. They might say, okay, um, how many invoices, what's the invoice number on that? How many uh, diners have they got in there? Or they might have people who are uh, like potentially we had uh, for the Brexit vote that a lot of people surveying uh, people as they came out of the polling booths they got a bit more of an edge on that and then they traded off that information but more likely it's going to be specific companies so they've got investigators who are looking at the company however they feel they can and saying right well we believe that things have died off here or things are really you know going really well they've got lots of tankers coming out of this refinery more than normal we've seen an uplift every month for the past seven many months maybe there's a long position there because because they think that the earnings are gonna increase. Maybe they see some of the flagship stores in retail groups, hey, you know what, on the busiest days, these guys were dead compared to some of the others. This might be a short position uh, for the Christmas trading update. So it's that kind of thing. It's just using legwork, if you like, to generate information that anybody can get, but they're just kind of, they don't know for sure, but they're acting on that and saying, well, we believe because of that, um, there's a position to be made. So anyway, guys, those are seven plus your eighth uh, lottery one, bizarre hedge fund strategies. If you know any others, stick them in the comments section below. Bye-bye.